الحمد لله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تبلى brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته This is Imam Fahim Shuaib and thank you so much for being with us this morning for Study Al-Islam, Life Topics. We're currently presenting on the night journey of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, from his seerah, that is his biography, and particularly the report usually entitled The Isra Wa Mi'raj. My presentation this morning will be on Musa or Moses on level six. Now, my particular approach to the topic is based on correlating four layers of information. Number one, the events of the Isra wa Mi'raj. Number two, the interpretive methodology of Imam Muhammad. Number three, the Quran. Surah Al-Mu'minun, chapter 23, particularly the verses 12 through 14. Now, in these verses, there are seven clear layers or seven clear levels that match, in fact, mirror the night journey of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then fourthly, what has been established in the science of human cognitive development. So the correlation of those four layers of information uh, are what I bring out, inshallah, and Allah knows best, uh, in our understanding so that we can use and apply uh, what we understand or see where it applies and uh, understand where it's at work in our life as individuals and in the society and inshallah bring it to bear in our community overall. So we know that uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Moses is on level six and to state explicitly what Moses in this manner of application actually means I want to give that first so that you can Make note of it, those of you who are taking notes, and understand, because we only ever get to cover a portion of it. Obviously, all of these these levels are very, very big. In fact, they're universal. So, Moses represents universal logic for particular culture. I didn't leave. I didn't leave. A, you know, a letter out. I didn't leave a word out. I didn't. I didn't say universal logic for a particular culture, universal logic for particular culture. Now, in my last presentation, we explained that Aaron, who was on level five, Moses' brother, uh, uh, is the personification of culturally evolved logic, which is born on the fifth level, but it only becomes mature when it's connected with and corrected by Moses or revealed knowledge. So let me see if I can just simplify just the bridge and the connection between Aaron and Moses. Aaron is a logic, but it's a logic that's born. He's, he's on level 5 and it's born in 23, 12 through 14. So Aaron is a logic, but it's a logic that's born out of culture. Every culture gives birth to a logic. Every culture gives birth to a logic. In fact, every culture is built upon a logic. It exists because of its logic. But the logic of every culture is not always uh, correct, meaning it is not uh, sufficient to get the human being to the destiny. There are many great things, wonderful things, alhamdulillah, the way that Allah has structured us, such that culture is necessary. Culture is, in fact, a womb that societies uh, evolve upon and, and people are enriched and acculturated and socialized through their culture. The fact that we have so many cultures and so many people living in so many different cultures means that, you know, those cultures are not things that kill people. Though they are what nurtures people. However, the foundation of the logic for every culture is not on uh, revelation. And 
that so that when it goes awry, when it when it you know has probably let's let's go with child sacrifice, you know, human sacrifice, right? Well, I mean that's that's a problem, even though there may be there may have been some things that have led them to act in ways that uh, you know society or that quote unquote civilization evolved well. But there's a point at which that nah, we got to stop this because this is not the right way. So I'm just using that as a stark example, but that's true for everything, even America. But I promise myself I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. Let's move away from that. So the point is that revelation has to come to correct all cultures. And so that's Moses constantly correcting Aaron. That's all it is. In, in the life of man, Moses correcting Aaron is revelation coming to a culture to correct its logic. All right, let's move on. So... <clears throat> I'd like to read Imam Muhammad's commentary because the foundation of my presentation is based on uh, one presentation. It's not the only presentation, but one presentation of Imam Muhammad from a retreat in 1999 in Randolph, Virginia. And I'll read the portion where he sp speaks of Moses. He said, In the Holy Quran is the metaphorical picture of the development of human life from dead matter and then sperm and then clot fetus lump, and bones. He's referring actually to 23, 12, to 14. He says, so bone is really on the fifth level. Prophet Aaron, he is in the fifth level representing the five senses, but that level also represents bone. Where bone has been formed, that's the level where bones can form. Bones are symbolic of logical connection. The Bible speaks of it in the valley of dead bones and the bones coming together. They're dead, separated, but when you put them together, they get life again. So it's also logic. It, it refers to logic and particularly cultural evolved logic. Okay? Culture in its innocence evolves a logic. Then after the bones, we are told by the metaphorical language of the Quran, and he clothed the bones with flesh. So after logic, logic evolves what? Education. Classic education. You can't have education without logic. Education must form to logic, and that's the sixth level, Moses. Don't the Jews call Moses the teacher? the great teacher of the Jews, Moses, peace be upon him, end of quote. That's from Imam Muhammad's, Imam's retreat, 1999, Randolph, Virginia. Specifically, the Quran, uh, 2314, I'll also be letting him the regime. Uh, last portion of it says, فَكَسْوَانَ الْعِذَامَ لَحْمًا And we covered the bones with flesh. So, الْعِذَامَ is bone. Lahman is flesh. <laughs> Oftentimes, when we when we read the the, the Arabic, you know, the tendency to well, okay, explain this grammar right there, explain it. Uh, but it it takes it takes more time than necessary. But I will just say this: that when you read those verses twenty three twelve to fourteen, every transition moving from the first to the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth to five to the final level, uh, you will see that it's a movement from indefiniteness to definiteness in grammar indefiniteness to definiteness whatever is talked about it's first expressed in the indefinite and then when it concludes it concludes in the definite but then after that definiteness it begins again with the next level being indefinite so Aaron is the indefinite of Moses I'm, I'm being quick Aaron is the indefiniteness of Moses Aaron even though it's bone but the point is that the bone and the flesh go together so the bone is not complete as bone. Bone can, the, the, the process, the evolution, the development cannot go forward without the bones being clothed with flesh. And there again, it speaks to the necessity. You can't have an Aaron without Moses, right? And Moses comes after Aaron. All right. So level five, Aaron was the birth of the capability in the individual for logic, but it's immature at that stage. It's unestablished and it's not free from potential error. This is the intellect's capability for logic, 
when it's new to the realm of logical abstraction, you have to go back to last week's broadcast to get more more detail, not last week's, but the last segment that we did on, on it. The point is that, yes, it's logic, but it's immature. It's logic, but it can still make mistakes. You know about this garbage in, garbage out, right? You, the idea is that, yeah, you're using logic, but your logic uh, is using content that does not lead to the best conclusions, therefore you make mistakes. So you have to talk about the sanity, uh, which we mentioned in the last broadcast on air. But the point is that uh, you're beginning to learn how to use logical abstraction, but it's not mature. That's why you have to get the education. That's why you have to get Moses. And that's what has to happen for all of us. Now, I will say this in a cautionary way. Don't just use this word logic and don't, you know, just pick the word logic, 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 like it's some kind of toy or something. No, you need to know what it actually is. You need to know how it actually applies. You need to know how it's actually being used. Uh, or you you can be deceived by yourself and by others. But from the social perspective, Aaron is logic born out of a particular culture. It too may be right or it may be wrong. It may be rested on the right foundations or on the wrong foundations. But whenever that is the case, that logic has to be corrected by an education, a logic that's fit for universal culture. And that's Moses that we're speaking of today on level six. Literally, the relationship between Moses and Aaron and the, the point that we're seeking to make is what is actually spoken of many times in the Quran where it says, You zaki him wa you alimu humul kitab wal hikmah. You zaki him wa you alimu humul kitab wal hikmah. It says, and he purifies them. Of course, it speaks of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what, what he did. But that's also just an, an intimation, an indication of the process that has to happen with all of us. We have to be user key in what you are Muhammad Kitab al Hikmah. We have to be purified and we have to be taught the book and the logic for governing our lives. So prototypically, as this reveal schema shows, it's normal that such corrections take place. This is a natural process. Do you understand that children the way that children get civilized is by being corrected. Don't talk with your mouth full. Don't point. Don't stare. We're in a library. Be quiet. Don't walk on the couch, et cetera, et cetera. What is that? Correction, correction, correction. Are they innocent? Yes, they're innocent. But that's how they get civilized. They get civilized by being corrected. And that's how it is with every society. It has to be corrected. And once a society becomes, let's call it mature in that sense, but still making errors, it's a revelation that has to come to correct that society. So Moses is always necessary in the individual and in, in the collective human journey to full human development. Now, there's so many stories of Moses in the book. I've heard many, many reports that there's no prophet spoken of more uh, in the Quran. Uh, then Moses. Uh, the stories of Moses are actually the reality of Moses that we're speaking of right now. The reality of Moses is one of the sacred properties of our human nature evolving to its destiny. Uh, and it's told in the many stories that we have of him in the Holy Quran. In the conclusion of the last segment on Aaron as a stage of human development, it's the beginning stage of the capacity to make logical connections, but the connections may not always be sound and valid. We're going to say more about that. Sound and valid. These are terminologies related to logic. So he has logic, but they're not always sound and valid. So it is with an individual. An individual uses logic, but their logic is not always sound and valid. This is why you need another source in order to condition your logic. The flesh has to come on the bone. Moses represents the reasoning capability that enables the person to determine, this is the education, the reasoning capability that enables the person to determine whether or not the conclusions derived from the premises are logically sound and valid. So my note takers put sound and valid and then look at that. You know, just look up. What's the difference between sound? I'm going to say something, but I'm saying to you, this is something that if you're really interested in really growing and using it and moving to these levels, 
then you need to understand what is sound and what is valid and what is the difference. But more importantly, that is the capability to determine morally, ethically, and spiritually if the logic is conducive to the forward-going progress of human nature to its destiny. Now, I know I said a lot. I'm going to read that section as one more time. It's being recorded, so you can go back and reflect on it again. Moses represents the reasoning capability that enables the person to determine. That is, you can question your own logic, right? Reasoning capability that enables the person to determine whether or not the conclusions derived from the premise are logically sound and valid. More importantly, this is the capability to determine the moral, the ethical, and the spiritual correctness of the logic and that it is conducive to the forward-going progress of human nature. It is of human nature to its destiny. Uh, and that was something because the word is running through my mind. The Quran, Quran is called Al-Furqan. Al-Furqan. This is, this is also speaking to that capability, the ability to determine the rightness, the correctness of something, even though it may look sound on the, on the face of it, but Revelation may uh, point out to you that, no, it looks sound, but it is weak in this, this area. And as we go forward to one of the stories of Moses, it, that gives us an example in concrete uh, terms uh, of this. So let's speak a little bit about soundness and validity. Uh, what is a valid argument? An argument is valid if the truth of the premises logically guarantee the conclusion. I'm going to just be brief. So the validity of an argument talks about the structure of the argument. So if somebody gives you an argument, you got to be able to look at the argument's structure, and once you see the structure, you can say, okay, this premise, that premise, that conclusion. Yeah, it's valid, but look at the substance of your premise. That's not true. That's not true. So even though your conclusion is valid and logically follows, naturally follows from the premises, the premises. A crap. Let me just make it short. Right? A valid argument may still have a false conclusion. For example, all toasters are made of uh, are items made of gold. All items made of gold are time travel devices. Therefore, all toasters are tra time travel devices. Right? The logic of the structure is correct, but the premises that lead to that conclusion are false. So, therefore, even though it's valid, it's not sound. Okay, so this is valid as much as those conclusions follow, uh, as we said. Now, what's a sound argument? A sound argument is an argument is sound if and only if it is both valid, meaning the structure is correct, and then all of the premises are true, right? So you got correct structure, and then the premises in the structure, they are also true. So uh, no felons are eligible voters. Some professional athletes are felons. Therefore, some professional athletes are not eligible voters. That's sound and that's valid. And this is what Musa alayhi salatu wasalam represents. The capacity to look at an argument, to look at reasoning, and be able to determine whether it's sound and valid, not just from a cognitive perspective, but when we speak of it at the higher level that we're speaking of, is it sound morally, ethically, spiritually? It can make all the sense in the world from that from that concrete uh, that uh, I can say cognitive perspective, but it can be corrupt in, as it relates to the mission uh, of God for human beings or the destiny uh, for uh, human beings, right? Uh, and what does Prophet Muhammad give us? Just as an example, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he says, he says, truth is what makes the heart feel tranquil. And falsehood is what wavers in the heart, even though people give fatwa in your favor repeatedly. See, there's something in the heart. There's something higher than logic, cognitivity, reasoning, etc., that is over and above soundness and validity. It still has to be correct with God. All right? And that's what Moses uh, brings us into, brings us into understanding. It's not sufficient to just know the logic. It's not sufficient just to be sound and valid. It has to square 
with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered. And the beauty of that hadith is that you have that judge in your heart already. This is why so many Bilalis, uh, we are able to listen to what other folks, I'll put it like that, what other folks say, yeah, yeah, nah, that don't sound right to me, right? Well, you ain't got no education. I don't know. But, you know, I know that ain't right, right? So what if the heart is able to transcend the, you know, the, the glittery logic of others? MashaAllah. Okay, so Moses represents the, the immature logic corrected and given the proper rationale. That is, it's made sound relative to God and the nature and destiny of human beings. That's the big deal. Not just enough to be brainy, not just enough to be cognitive, not just enough to be able to use reasoning and logic, and et cetera, et cetera. You have to be able to square whatever that is with what Allah intends for human beings. And this is also what is very, very clearly given, uh, and Allah knows best, from Moses' meeting with al Khizr as he's known in the tradition, Moses meeting the wise man, right? One of the stories of Moses that illustrates this. When Moses met al Khizr, Moses was in his own Aaron stage. This is chapter 18. You go look in chapter 18, Surah 18, Moses was actually at the Aaron stage from a mental, cognitive, logical perspective, right? At that stage in his story, Moses was one whose ability to use logic had not yet been inspired beyond the concrete, right? When you read the story, you see that he was walking with his servant and it came time for lunch and he wanted his lunch and he, he sought rest on a rock. And when he sought rest on a rock, he said, bring, bring me the fish. And then the rest of the story said, well, didn't you see it got away from it? Oh, that's where we're supposed to be. So he retraced his steps. The point is, seeking rest on a rock is saying he thought he could just depend on his logic in order to get to the destiny. And that's a statement that says, no, logic is not sufficient to reach the destiny. You need to go back and pick up something that you lost. Moses' maturity is illustrated also in his defeat of Pharaoh's magicians, right? Uh, he used what appeared to be the same magic. And let's just clarify briefly in terms of Moses wasn't using magic. What Moses used in that battle in relationship to Pharaoh's magicians, Moses was not magic any more than the Quran is poetry. They look, they look similar, but it is not. So Moses wasn't using magic, and the Quran is not poetry. But he used what appeared to be the same magic, but with taqwa. And in accordance with the guidance of Allah, revealed knowledge in service to truth and human freedom. His battle with the magicians was a battle of snakes versus snakes, right? And what do snakes represent? Snakes represent, represent rationale. One rationale battling with another rationale. That's what's going on in Capitol Hill right now, just to mention. And these battles, these people are battling. What's battling? What My rationale is battling your rationale. His rationale is battling her rationale. My reasoning is battling his reasoning. Her reasoning is battling her reasoning. That's what the battle actually is. So the idea is that his rationale defeated their rationale. His reasoning defeated their reasoning. And that's why we have to become strong in our capacity for using logic and reasoning, etc., grounded in what Allah has revealed. Otherwise, you're just battling, um, what you say, materialism versus materialism. Let's move on. So, so there was, uh, there was, there's what the, what the Pharaoh's magicians were giving. They were casting theirs from illusion, right? So they gave the illusion, so, and the Quran says, and Satan makes uh, uh, glittering falsehoods appear true, uh, have glittering half-truths designed to delude the mind. That's what we get all the time in this media that we get, false reasoning that's not grounded in truth. Uh, but Moses, he brought, alayhi salatu wasalam, he brought his from the revelation of God. He brought proofs. He brought credentials. He brought scriptural logic, we would say, upon the reality of God and his revelation. 
So Moses represents the ability to keep one's logic sound and valid and in service to those cultural sensitivities that are intended for man by God. Uh, I think briefly, just to understand how does it concretely work, listen, Al-Islam has spread all over the globe. Therefore, Al-Islam has come to every culture in the world, African culture, European culture, uh, you know, uh, Pacific Island culture, Asian culture, and everywhere Al-Islam went, it didn't change the culture, it purified the culture, it enhanced the culture, it just corrected those places where it was in error. But in Asia, Al-Islam has an Asian flair. In Africa, Al-Islam has an African flair. In America, Al-Islam has and will have an American flair, etc. So the point is that every culture has to come to the come to the Moses level in order for it to evolve in the best way to achieve the destiny for that particular culture. So this is why Moses is the correction for the logic of a given culture so that its sensitivities uh, conform to Allah's will for the destiny of man. So Aaron and, Mo- Aaron and Moses, uh, we know, have the same mother, right? Their socialization and sensitivities, they have the same source. However, Moses is slightly higher in the Isra than Aaron, and therefore he's higher in his role, in his status, in his function. They also stand in the same asymmetrical relationship on the scale of cognitive development for human beings. And we've explained it. Asymmetric means that he's just a little bit, Moses is just a little bit higher than Aaron. It's, it's just like if two people were having salat and the man, uh, he leads the prayer, but he's just only like a half a step ahead of the one that's next to, next to him. Uh, overall and otherwise, they are equal. Again, the bones are clothed with flesh. So the cognitive capability at this level includes the combinatorial reasoning, the process of being able to select, to organize, to reorganize things or ideas according to a purpose. Very clearly in Quran, the second chapter, the 60th verse of the Quran, I'll just read the English. It says, and remember Moses prayed for water for his people. We said, strike the rock, there's that rock again, with your staff. What is the staff? It's actually Moses' mind, if you understand. We did like 18 Jumas, I think, on the, the significance of Moses' rod. Um, strike the rock with thy staff, then gushed forth from there 12 streams. Each group knew its own place for water. So eat and drink of the sustenance provided by Allah and do no evil nor mischief on the face of the earth. So much teaching in this, but it actually is saying what we say, the 12 is universal, 12 is the organization of the of the government, of the society, of the culture, striking the rock uh, to bring forth the water is what satisfies the cultural sensitivities. Uh, this, this is all there in that verse, and again, it's the picture of Moses. So, <clears throat> concluding, Moses represents the reasoning capability that enables the person to determine whether or not the conclusions derived from the premises are logically sound and valid. More importantly, it is the capability to determine the moral, the ethical, the spiritual value of the logic to ensure that it's conducive to the forward progress of human nature, to its destiny. Moses represents immature logic that's corrected. That is, Aaron is the immature logic. It's logic, but immature but Moses corrects Aaron, and it's given the proper rationale. You can have a logic, but the rationale has to be corrected, and it's made sound relative to God's plan for the human being. So Moses represents the universal spiritual logic from the nature that serves the entirety of a particular society. So when any culture becomes healthy in order to move to the next level, because, again, we have Abraham, right? And, of course, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who establishes it, uh, every society has to move. If it's going to grow, it's got to move from level five to level six. Level five is sort of, it sort of comes naturally by existing, meaning as a culture, you're going to come into existence, or as a culture, you've come into existence, but then you're not complete as a culture because there's some purification that has to happen upon the logic that has caused you to grow. 
it is necessary, but it's not sufficient. It has to be purified and it has to be corrected by revelation and has to be oriented toward the destiny, the full destiny of humanity, not just, you know, big buildings and, you know, uh, whatever, entertainment and, and the like. You have to go to the destiny, and that's what Moses represents. So, inshallah, uh, the next segment for uh, this study al-Islam uh, broadcast will be the seventh level and the seventh level, of course, we know is Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wa So, alhamdulillah, inshallah, you'll join for that. Uh, let me tell you this also in, in, in concluding. Brother and sister, if you have not gotten, if you don't know about, if you're not aware of, you should be aware of, and you should get uh, the live recording from the Zaytuna College in Berkeley, California, October of last year, uh, what was entitled an academic examination of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's contribution to the ministry of Imam W.D. Muhammad. Every home should have that. I can remember a time where, you know, your home was in right order when you had an, a set of encyclopedia in it. Well, there should be no Muslim home, especially any of you on this broadcast and any of you who know people who would otherwise be on this broadcast. No one should be without this. This is an artifact of history that has meaning beyond expression. You have to get it. And it's just one of many that have to continue to come. Uh, because truly, brothers and sisters, understand this. If we don't tell our story, hurry up and trust that nobody will. There are so many that would wish we would just dry up and go away with that Elijah Muhammad, W.D. Muhammad talk. So I'm going to cut myself off because I, I see my, somebody bringing my soapbox to me. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. So you can get in touch with studyalislam.com, the San Francisco Muslim Community Center, and also Master the World theme. These are all places where you can get this beautiful five DVD set. And it's shot in a way where it is broadcast quality. The lighting is correct. The sound is correct. The aesthetic is co are correct. You need to have this. And if you want program activities to happen at your masjid or your Islamic center, get this. And every listen, every panel, every segment is a foundation for long conversations. And perhaps the largest uh, the largest thing is to educate that generation behind us. Many of them, they simply don't know. And if we don't tell them, they will not know. So that's as much as I'll say about that. Get it? StudyAllIslam.com, San Francisco Muslim Community Center, Master the World Team. God, peace be on you, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and a successful 2019 and beyond. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.